All right, hello my wonderful philosophy students. How are you all doing this fine day? I hope you're doing great. This is the third video I've made in two days, and I have to say, I'm learning a lot about making videos. Okay, so what I want to do in this video is to walk you through poems one and two from the Tao Te Ching. That's how I'm going to refer to them. I don't know how other people might refer to them, but I always call them poems. Uh, so poems one and two. So I think it'd be helpful if you had your book out with you while we did this. I'll read the poem, at least with poem one, I'll read the poem in its entirety. Poem two, I'll break it up. Um, and then I'll just kind of go back through with sort of my commentary on it, things that are important to point out. And uh, we'll just see how this goes. All right, so yes, here's my little book. Okay, so poem one. Poem 1 will probably make no sense to you. The first poem will probably be best understood once you've read the majority of the book and you go back to read poem 1. Like that, very similar to what I said about the introduction, it will probably make more sense in that context. But still, it is the first poem, and even though uh, there's no particular way to go through the Tao Te Ching, like I said in the introductory video, there's no... There's no uh, order, per se, to, to the poems. You may as well start with the first one. And according to our introduction of the book, uh, the first line is one of the most famous lines uh, in all of philosophy. It's a pretty big claim. But hey, it's a good one, right? So here we go. I'll read the poem, and then I'll, I'll walk you through it, right? And you can follow along in, in your book as well. Poem 1. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of ten thousand things. Ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one can see the manifestations. These two spring from the same source but differ in name. This appears as darkness. Darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. So last year uh, in class, we spent almost an entire class period talking about this poem because of people's different takes on it, especially given that they weren't exposed to the rest of the book. Um, we, we don't have that opportunity. Um, but I think the more you think about it, of course you can just brush over it very quickly, but I think the more you try to derive meaning from it, the more intriguing and mysterious it becomes. Of course, it's always helpful to have a, a, another translation, uh, especially when the translation you happen to be reading it seems to be very vague uh, and or like the language itself is almost nonsensical to, to you. Um, to, to have a different translation. Uh, and I do have a different one and I'll talk about, I'll use it here in a moment to kind of juxtapose and maybe it'll give some clarification on some of the portions of the poem. But of course this opening line, the Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. So what is the Tao? Uh, I don't know if any of you guys read the introduction in your book, you certainly weren't required to, uh, but the Tao is this presence, right? This presence that exists in the universe. You might say it underlies the, uh, the universe itself, or it is what gives life to the universe. So the Tao in and of itself is a very mysterious thing that is difficult to know, and it might even be unknowable. So it says the Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. So in the Tao Te Ching, there, Jing, there's a uh, there's a big emphasis on creating meaning out of nothingness. In other words, something exists out there, right? But that thing that is out there is in its natural state, and it is unnamed. And once we begin giving things names, in other words, creating identities for things that already exist, it is when that occurs that the thing begins to lose its identity. It's a very strange concept. 
we'll see it multiple times throughout the book and it will begin to take shape and make sense to you. But when it says the Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao, the eternal Tao, well, so the Tao uh, exists all by itself without a name. We, humanity, have given a name to the Tao. And by giving a name to the Tao, by calling it the Tao, like we created that name, the Tao did not give itself that name. By giving it that name, we have already boxed it in in terms of what it is. And we will find that this is true with many of the things uh, in, in life and society as we go through this book. Uh, so, that is a, a, a a part of this opening line. It's a very mysterious part of it. Um, so, to continue, a couple of things to point out. Um, oh, well, I guess in line two, to, kind of, uh, to continue with that idea, the name that can be named is not the eternal name. So, it's the idea that the name of the Tao uh, is something that is outside of our own conception of it. The name, Tao, is not the eternal name of the Tao. Think of it like this. You have a name. I have a name. We all have names. My name is Derek Allen Parsons. That's really weird to say out loud, but anyway, that's my name. My name is Derek Allen Parsons. Is my essence Derek Allen Parsons? No. Is Ksenia, that's where I'm calling people out, is Ksenia's uh, essence named Cassinia Is Riley's essence named Riley? No. They're the thing that dwells within you that is that universal energy that we'll talk about further once we get further into the Tao. That thing is named, they've named that thing. And someone named it. No, I didn't name myself Derek. Uh, of course, even, even if I had the choice to name myself, even if I didn't choose Derek, I would have chosen some kind of name. And so, by naming myself, or by someone naming me, they have put my essence, my true, the eternal me, right, the eternal Tao, if you will, the eternal me into a box, if you will. It's probably not the best symmetry, but, um, and then you begin attaching other things. Let's continue to talk about me. Uh, so you say, like, Derek is a, Mr. Parsons, is a teacher, Mr. Parsons, is a father. The more we continue to attach names to who we are, it takes us further away from the thing that we actually are, the eternal self. So a couple of other things to point out in this particular uh, passage, this poem one. Uh, in line three, we have, for the first time, we will see it multiple times, this is why I'm pointing it out, the term heaven and earth. Well, we see those two together, heaven and earth. And so in the conception of this particular book, heaven and earth represents what is here on our planet, right? Heaven that is above us, earth that is below us, we exist between those two things, between heaven and earth. And so uh, when it mentions uh, heaven and earth, understand that, that that's what it's talking about. When it says heaven, it's not talking about like some Judeo-Christian um, idea of some eternal place that we might go after we're dead, right? Uh, when it says heaven, it's talking about the starry sky that is above us, right? The canopy of clouds and atmosphere that is above us, that is heaven. And earth is, of course, just the ground that is beneath us. So um, the nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. Uh, and then in the next line, we have another term that will show up multiple times, and that is the 10,000 things, uh, which is a great term that's used to say everything. The 10,000 things is everything. Everything that physics, physically exists in our physical, uh, in our physical uh, universe, right? So it is the named is the mother of 10,000 things. There's a lot to talk about there in that line, I'm going to skip it for now. Uh, the, the, so, so when we run into 10,000 things further in poems, know that 10,000 things is everything. 10,000 is, is a large number, but instead of saying something like infinite things or whatever, uh, the author chose to use 10,000 things. And so the named, the named is the Tao. 
Um, and the Tao, the named Tao, not the eternal Tao, the named Tao is the mother of 10,000 things. We will also see the image of mother brought up multiple times, mother or the woman uh, brought up multiple times in these poems. So of course we know that uh, that a mother is that from which, especially in, um, in literature and in a lot of uh, religions, um, that the idea of the mother is uh, an image of someone who is soft and caring and nurturing and, of course, is that from which life comes, right? So, the named is the mother of 10,000 things. In other words, the Tao is that which has given creation to everything that exists. So we're talking about some pretty metaphysical stuff here, and I will once again point out, it was in the introduction as well, that when we talk about the Tao, or when the book talks about the Tao, we are not talking about a personal god, uh, a theistic god, uh, that we are familiar with, that we uh, talked about when, in the unit on the philosophy of religion. So, please don't try to make that comparison when it talks about the Tao. Uh, to be like, my apologies to Taoists, if you are watching, uh, to make a really superficial comparison, uh, Taoism is very similar to what the Jedi's and I guess the Sith, talk about when they talk about the Force. It is something that is in nature that underlies all things and gives life and energy. Um, so if you're familiar with that scene from Return of the Jedi, uh, where Yoda, that's where I'm going there, where Yoda, where's R2-D2? talks about the flow and energy of things. This is what we're referring to when we talk about the Tao. It's a much more abstract idea than, say, a theistic god. And we have the image of darkness in this. Darkness in uh, Western literature, certainly, but even in Eastern um, literature and thought, darkness is often associated with that which is bad. Um, you know, if you think about fairy tales, going into a dark woods, going into a dark cave, blah, 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 blah. These are like, these are things that are, uh, are negative in nature. That's not, not the case with the Tao Te Ching. And again, we have the concept that comes along with the Tao Te Ching that is that of yin-yang, right? Uh, so we have a light side of the, of the yin-yang symbol and we have a dark side. The dark side is not negative, um, just as the light side is not positive, right? Uh, it's that they both just represent ideas. And in the Tao Te Ching, darkness is associated with softness, right? With allowing things to happen, with letting go uh, of, of that which um, is a part of our existence, uh, that we attempt to control, letting go of control. When I say let go, we're talking about letting go of the control of things and allowing things to happen in their natural way. Darkness is comforting. Darkness is something that is embracing, right? Darkness is slowing down uh, and taking your time with things. That's what darkness represents. So when we see darkness used in the book, um, that, is, that is what it comes to. So let me, uh, let me um, offer you and, and follow along with, uh, with your book. I want to read a different translation of this particular poem uh, translated by Ralph Allen Dell. It's a cute little, it's a cute little uh, copy of it. Um, so here's how he translates um, poem one, and you'll see that it's quite a bit different. The opening two lines, however, are about the same. The Tao that can be told is not the universal Tao. The name that can be named is not the universal name. In the infancy of the universe, there were no names. Naming fragments the mysteries of life into 10,000 things and their manifestations. Let me repeat that. Um, in fact, uh, we'll, we'll do line by line. Uh, the, for, so from the Finn English translation, the nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of 10,000 things. The Dell translation, in the infancy of the universe, there were no names. 
Naming fragments the mysteries of life. That's what I was talking about. The more we name things, the more we break them down into their individual parts and take away like the holistic essence of it. Uh, naming fragments the mysteries of life into 10,000 things and in their manifestations. Uh, still, from the Dell translation. Yet mysteries and manifestations spring from the same source, the great integrity. And in the Dell translation, which I like this, uh, he calls the Tao the great integrity. The great integrity, which is the mystery within manifestation, the manifestation within mystery, the naming of the unnamed, and the unnaming of the named. When these interpretations are in full attendance, we will pass the gates of naming notions into our journey towards transcendence. Those last three lines from the Finn English um, is, this appears as darkness, darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. Again, Dale says, when these interpretations are in full attendance, in other words, when we are being mindful about naming things and about the essence of things, when, we, when these uh, interpretations are in full attendance, we will pass the gates of naming notions into our journey towards transcendence. In other words, the less we name things, the less we try to convolute ourselves with uh, understanding of things and it's breaking down and distilling into their small parts, the more we do that, the further away we get from knowing the actual thing. And so by attending, by attending uh, these interpretations with our full attendance, uh, we pass through the gateway. In other words, we move closer to our journey towards transcendence. Now, transcendence is a, uh, is a big word, but uh, for now I'm just gonna say like, that is just coming closer to true knowledge, okay? So, looking at the camera here, and it looks like we're at 20 minutes. No way am I going to go over poem two. It would probably take another 20 minutes. I have talked about this much longer than I thought it would. No surprise, though. I have the gift for gab. All right, guys, I will probably change up uh, the, the learning activities um, f for this week since I did not go over poem two as I intended. So, anyway, uh, you know, just check the canvas and... Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing each of you on, uh, on Wednesday at 10.45. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This will be the, uh, I think we'll try Zoom. So this will be the uh, first time I've tried Zoom to putting together a, a Zoom. I'll be on 15 minutes early, so at 10.30, just in case people have difficulty logging on or something. And since it's our first time, uh, there will probably be issues because that's just how it goes with technology. So if you can't get in, um, you know, don't, don't flip out. It'll be okay. Um, I'm not stressed. You're not stressed. Certainly Lao Tzu would not want you to be stressed over all this. So, uh, so I will see you Wednesday at 1045 or earlier. And, uh, and I think that's it, guys. Thanks for, um, thanks for tuning, tuning in. Um, and, uh, and have a, have a great day, whatever it is you're doing with your day. See you guys later. Alright guys, well, actually, I will change up the learning opportunity. What are we calling those things? Where was I? Is that how you refer to it? Putting together a Zoom? Alright. <clears throat> oh, clearing the throat's probably not a great thing to do on camera. Try to. Mr. Parsons is a, uh, a. I don't know anything else to say about myself. This is really sad. Alfred's barking. Can anyone hear that? Um. Does that make sense? Ah, notification on my computer.